Let's be honest, guys, looks matter. And if you deal with acne, redness, dark spots, or wrinkles, you know finding effective treatment can be complicated. But our friends at Roman have stepped up and created a customized prescription skincare solution, and it really performs. Roman offers a free online consultation with a U.S. licensed physician. If you're a good candidate, a doctor will prescribe a custom blended treatment based on your skin type that will be sent directly to you with free two-day shipping. You'll have unlimited follow-ups with your doctor. If you need to make a change or have any questions, there are no commitments. You can cancel anytime. Go to GetRoman.com slash skin to try a three-month supply of Nightly Defense for just $5. Remember, it's free to chat with a doctor, and your first order is just 5 bucks. That's GetRoman.com slash skin. Eligibility requirements and additional terms apply. Colby versus Woodley, okay, probably didn't stun you what you saw. It probably didn't. And I'll say in this regard, if you were to look at Tyron's last three fights now, so we got Colby, we got Gilbert, and we've got Usman. I have maintained for you and I maintain for you now, Woodley has not slowed down. Woodley does not look like he's lost his explosiveness. He does not look like he's lost his condition, his pace, his toughness. There is one constant, though. There is one divisible in each one of those three fights, which is for whatever reason, he is getting taken down more. He got taken down more in the Usman fight, set that aside, more in the Burns fight, set that aside, more in the Colby fight than he had in his entire career. Now, the question is why, and the question is what do you do with that? And I don't have the solution for you. I feel as though he's moving his feet very well. I feel as it is not a defensive issue that Tyron is having, it is an offensive issue. Tyron used to have a little bit more output. He used to blitz just a little bit more to gain your respect and get opponents backing up. It made them scared to want to come in, so they didn't try to take him down. It seems now that he's trying to back up just a little bit. He's trying to lure guys in with a little bit more of a, a fancy boxing style to then get his hands going, which now brings those guys in. Now they see the opportunity for the attack. I am not fully convinced that I've hit it on the head even with that analysis. I am correct in stating for you the one thing from a physical X's and O's standpoint that has happened to Tyron, it's happened to him three times now, is that guys are able to get in on it. They're able to get to those legs, they're able to pick him up and get him down to the mat. Now, the three guys I just mentioned are all very good wrestlers. That's true. But Tyron's been in there with damn good wrestlers. And I'm telling you, nobody's even gotten close. Nobody's gotten to step one, which is to change elevation and even get a hold of his legs. Tyron's not in scrambles and having to get his hips back and sprawl and do baseline defense. They're simply not even trying to take him down in his previous fights. So I think that's something, if you're Tyron, that you have to sit down and study and take a look at. I think the question of what's next for both of these guys gets a little bit complicated. Colby made it very clear what he wants to be next. He wants Usman or he wants Masvidal, but he wants a belt fight. Okay. Usman is booked with Burns, and it appears that Masvidal is going into a fight with Nate Diaz. I think the bigger fight is likely Colby versus Masvidal. You just have the backstory there. You have the backstory that two great storytellers are going to come out and bring before us. But set what the big fight is aside. If there's negotiations and there's a discussion going on and you can't get those fights, what else should Colby do? In all fairness, what else should Colby Covington do if it's not to fight for a title. It's a very hard thing. He is very dominant. Kobe, the one thing that we learned from Kamaru Usman versus Kobe Covington, and we only learned one damn thing, which is that we had found the right two guys. The one thing that Kobe could tell you, regardless of how much he did not like Usman, is he could go, yeah, you were the right guy to be in here with me for the world championship. But the one thing that Usman could tell you about Kobe, even though he doesn't like him and isn't going to pay him a lot of compliments, is yes, you were the right adversary for me. But he's booked He's, he's got something to do. Now it's Gilbert, Gilbert's shot. So I just ask you, what should happen with Colby? It's a very tough thing. And you could have some fun matches. You could go, well, give him to Leon Edwards. Okay, fine. I mean, you could say, okay, fine. And some people were calling for a Chemayev. Get these two together. Have an elimination bout. Let's just get through this thing real quickly. Uh, okay, I'll listen to you. But Chemayev right now has Damian Maya coming up. And if they follow the script, then Chemayev goes back up to 185 pounds, if and only if he ends up getting booked with two guys, a, 
Oh, welterweight after that. It's just one of these things where I think we just need to take our oars out of the water. Let Colby enjoy a night. Colby had tremendous pressure. He was very light on his feet. He did not come out orthodox. Thank goodness. He did not. That was media hype. He did not do it. He switched at one point in the fight through one right hand and then went back to his southpaw, which just allowed his wrestling to work. That's what allows his footwork to, to happen. And Colby will trick you, by the way. He'll kick you in the leg, the body, and the head. He'll hit you with a fly knee. He'll change elevation to come back up with an uppercut. He'll change elevation, come in, and, and make it a shot. And he has weaponized pace. George St. Pierre, one of the first to ever do that, to make pace a weapon. Get you tight. Colby looked as good in the fifth round as he did in the first round. And if he's hiding and he's acting, and I'm sure he's very tired out there, who cares? If his output keeps up, who cares how hard his heart's beating? He is not backing down. He is scrambling. I mean, Colby Covington has, has once again proven what Kamara has proven, that those guys are the right two guys. Now let's take a look at the other side of the coin because you have to ask yourself, where does Tyron go? And guys, please don't be jerks about this. I've heard a lot of stuff out there that Tyron is getting old, that Tyron isn't what he used to be, that Tyron's wore down or slow. I, I'm not seeing those things. But I will concede to you, he has fought five rounds in his last three fights for a total of 15 rounds and a total of 75 minutes. He's lost 15 straight rounds and he's lost 75 straight minutes. I understand these things. If you're not willing to meet me halfway that he's losing to the absolute best guys in the world, okay, all guys that are in belt fights have had belts before. If you're not willing to meet me there, we still do have a problem of what do you do with Tyron. Very hard to book him against a guy coming off wins. By example, Tyron versus Leon Edwards. That fight works. That fight sell. That fight's competitive. That fight simply can't happen. Leon has won eight in a row. Tyron has lost three in a row. I'm just offering for you that I, I do see some of the problems here. If I am Tyron's manager and I have to sit him down on Monday, what do we do next? There is one answer, and there's one answer very clear, which is you make it very clear to the audience that the only reason you are losing these fights is that you are drained. You were a 174-pounder in college. You are now fighting at 170 pounds, four pounds less, and it is too small and too taxing on your body, which is why I am now a middleweight. 